Well, hello, this is your devotional for Monday, April 27. And I've had some people ask me kind of what got me thinking about doing this, doing the devotionals. And I really just began thinking in this season, what a great opportunity to reflect on the Psalms and walk through them. So what I do each week is I start where we left off and I just start reading the Psalms. And some of the Psalms maybe fit our circumstances more than others. And so I kind of let those ones highlight and come out and read a portion of all of those Psalms with you and reflect on them. And so we're in this, this week, we're going to be in the 80s and starting to the 90s in Psalms. We haven't covered every Psalm, obviously, but we've covered all the Psalms that really seem to at least hit my heart as very, uh, very timely for what we're going through. And so today we're looking at Psalm 84, uh, the first four verses and then the last three verses. So just listen to God's word, just kind of quiet your heart. And listen to what God has to say to you. How lovely is your dwelling place, Lord Almighty. My soul yearns, even faints, for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh cry out for the living God. Even the sparrow has found a home, and the swallow a nest for herself, where she may have her young, a place near your altar. Lord Almighty, my King and my God. Blessed are those who dwell in your house. They are ever praising you. And then moving to the 10th verse. Better is one day in your courts than a thousand elsewhere. Better is one day with you, God, than a thousand days anywhere else. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than dwell in the tents of the wicked. For the Lord is a sun and a shield. The Lord bestows favor and honor. No good thing does he withhold from those whose walk is blameless. Lord Almighty, blessed is the one who trusts in you. Just a couple of insights that come out of this passage. One is that the psalmist says, I'm longing, I'm yearning, God, to draw near you, to, to come to your temple, to gather with your people, to celebrate your goodness. And, and the psalmist is operating with this idea that to get close to God, they need to draw near the temple. They need to come to this gathering place. But what we've learned in this season of, of life, when since Christ has come, since the Holy Spirit has entered human history in a very deep and personal way, since Acts chapter 2, where the Spirit came upon the church, is that no longer does God dwell in buildings built by human hands. The dwelling place of God, the temple of God, is in you and me if we've accepted Jesus Christ. When a person puts their faith in Jesus, the Spirit of God moves in and we become His dwelling place. So when we say, God, I want to draw near to you, we don't have to go to a church building. We don't have to go to a temple. If we're a follower of Jesus, we are near him. Why? Because we're his dwelling place. The spirit of God dwells in you and in me if we follow him. I want to encourage you to understand in this season that although we're not gathering together in the same physical place, we're worshiping the same God. And if you want to draw near to God, you don't have to go any farther than where you're sitting or standing right now because he dwells in you. I also want to notice that in this passage, the psalmist talks about God being a shield. And I want you to be praying, God, shield me from the emotional turmoils I'm facing, from relational tensions. God, shield me from, from just bad decisions and bad choices right now. God, shield me from myself. Shield me from others. Shield me from the attacks of the enemy. God, surround me with your presence. I hope as you start a new week that you understand that you can draw near to God right where you are because you are the dwelling place of the Spirit of the living God. He is your shield and your fortress. Let me pray for you today. Lord Jesus, thank you for a new week. I thank you for a start into a week that we pray we will live fully for you. May we understand that as people used to talk about dwelling in your presence, coming into your presence as going to the temple, now we recognize that we are the dwelling place of the living God. You are near us. But God, we also want to say we love to gather together with your people. We look forward. We pray very, very soon to gathering together to worship you. But for now, we acknowledge you are with us. You are our shield. And we give you all the praise and all the glory. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, Donna Brown, our communications director, is going to share a few things with you. So be attention, pay attention to that. And then I'll be back with you again for Wednesday's devotional. Thanks so much for staying engaged for this Shoreline Church update. Shoreline has some new events this week that I'd like to share with you today. 
The first is this Wednesday evening. Pastor Roy will be hosting a webinar at 7 p.m. This will be an introduction to the five love languages. He will walk through the purpose and reason for understanding and utilizing the five love languages in your relationships and how this is more important than ever with the people you are closest to right now during this time of sheltering in place. You'll find information in today's email or on our website for joining this webinar on Wednesday. Second, we're hosting a women's mentoring meet and greet this coming Sunday, May 3rd at 1 p.m. If you recently have more time in your schedule and are looking to connect with someone outside your home or wondering how this season you are in right now can become more of a blessing than you initially imagined, we invite you to check out the Women's Mentoring Program. You can join us for this online meeting to learn more about the mentoring program at Shoreline. We're looking for both mentors and mentees who will be paired together to go through life together and grow in their faith. We ask that you sign up to attend and we'll find more information or can sign up on our website via the link in today's email. Lastly today, we've put together a resource for all of you who have recently found yourself taking on a new role in your home. That would be the role of teacher. We reached out to Amy Stroud, Pastor Sean's wife, who has agreed to share some of her insight for effective teaching. Amy is currently a first grade teacher and has also homeschooled four kids for over 11 years while Pastor Sean was serving in the military. I think that you will find Amy's tips for homeschooling your kids both encouraging and practical in a way that will help you as your kids continue this school year from inside your home. I also want to continue to encourage you to continue to connect with us. We consider it our privilege to be able to pray for you and invite you to email us at prayer at shoreline.church. Thank you.